Christmas presents. That's, uh, that's our, our theme, our, our big idea for uh, the month of December as we lead up to Christmas time. And we have a foundational verse that I really want you guys to, to embrace and embody and, and read up on and listen about. Um, Isaiah chapter 9, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up, turn them on. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 is a, is a promise that we get to read. And this is, this is what uh, God's word says. Isaiah 9, 6. For, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now I know many of you are thinking to yourselves, I've heard that verse before. That sounds all Christmassy and stuff. I've, I've heard that thing, and that child is born away in a manger, all that kind of stuff. I, I, I remember that, that. That sounds very Christmassy. But what's the big deal about this verse? Why is this verse so important for us to understand? After all, it was a promise. It was written by the prophet Isaiah some 700 years before Christ, which is some 2,700 years before today. What's the big deal about this? You see, Isaiah is giving witness giving witness to the greatness and the goodness of God by promising Jesus, by promising the Messiah, the Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. This child will be born to you, to this people, as a Savior, as the connector between you and God. That's the big deal. That's the big deal. And see, the one thing that we need to understand about this is, is God in that moment and God in the Christ moment, in the, in the birth moment of Jesus, and God today, God has not forgotten about you and God has not forgotten about the struggle that you're in. God, in fact, sent his son Jesus into this world to be a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, and a prince of peace. And over the next four weeks, we're going to look at these four characters, these four names, in fact, that we see for Jesus. These four different categories, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. And each week we're going to walk through this and we're going to open up some presents. We're going to open up presents each and every week that kind of help us understand a little bit about the name of Jesus that we're going to talk about that week. So today we're going to talk about wonderful counselor. So I have my, my present here ready to be opened. Now, before I do this, I want to I ask you real quick, just, you know, you can either just mentally kind of say, ha ha, yes, or, or no, or raise your hand, whatever you want to do. Are, 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 you a, are you a present shaker? Are you a shaker? Are you a thumper? Are you a peeker? Did you, did you, ever, did you ever sneak up under the tree before Christmas time, unwrap the package, check inside, know what it was, and then rewrap it? Did you ever do that? Some of you did. All right, all right. All right, so today, our wonderful counselor, we're opening up our package, our present this morning. And inside, lo and behold, we have a magic eight ball. Magic eight ball. Now, when I was a kid, my mom wouldn't let me have one of these because she thought they were of the devil. They probably are. All right. But... Um, for our purpose this morning, because I, I want us to draw this, this connection here, because, because the Bible tells us that, that Jesus is a wonderful counselor. I want to I show some of the ridiculousness of the things that we take as counsel in our life, one of which being the magic eight ball, of all things. All right, so the way this thing works is you ask it a question, and it, through the, the miracles of science and greater learning and fluid technology and thermodynamics, Fancy words for there's a dice floating around in some liquid stuff. And randomly it will give you some crazy answer. All right, so the first question that we're going to ask this morning is, will my kids get me what I want for Christmas? Most likely, I am so excited because the magic eight ball told me so. All right, next question. You heard that, son. The magic eight ball said you're getting me what I want for Christmas. All right, all right. Second question, am I going to mention the outcome of the Clemson Carolina game? <laughs> concentrate and ask again. I'd like to concentrate and watch it again in a, with a better outcome, but that's another story. All right, next question, will we have snow in Anderson this Christmas? Yes, definitely. 
Well, Magic 8-Ball says. And, and if the Magic 8-Ball ain't good enough for you, some of you on your fancy, fancy kind of phones, you have this really wonderful person that, uh, that, that you can ask questions of, and it gives you, you know, somewhat good answers, right? All right, so let's, let's, let's check it out. Let's, let's, let's see if Siri, will it snow in Anderson this Christmas? Siri, will it snow in Anderson this Christmas? Okay, I found this on the web. Well, I've done this like all day, and, and that's not what it said every time. But um, So Siri is super inconsistent. Once again, it proves my point. When we ask opinions of things, we don't necessarily get really wise advice. You know, the questions that I ask, the questions that we all ask, we, um, we ask them of, of, of all sorts of places, don't we? And sometimes we get some really ridiculous advice. I better turn this thing off before it starts talking to me again. All right. Um, and here's, this cra here's a crazy thing. Here's a scary thing. Some of us, some of you, you actually put stock in the answers that you get from things like a Magic 8-Ball or Siri or Google or Oprah or Dr. Oz or Ellen or the Long Island Medium or horoscopes, or whatever pop culture says. We put our stock in some of these things. We have problems. We have serious issues in our lives, and yet look at the counselors that we go to sometimes. The counselors that we have in our lives, such as a biased mother, such as a know-it-all co-worker, or that pessimistic friend, and yet that's where we often turn for the, the greatest answers that we need to the greatest problems in our life. The promise that we see in Isaiah is that God is the wonderful counselor. He is the one that can provide us with excellent knowledge, amazing wisdom. He is the one that we should seek for advice because he gives us the greatest advice. God gives us tremendous direction instead of pop culture that tells us things like, well, I'm not sure exactly what you should do, but, but you should follow your heart. Now, somebody's told you that before, right? Just, just follow your heart. Now, you, you know where that is in the Bible, right? Nowhere. And, and, and let me tell you why follow your own, your, your heart is such a bad idea. Because your heart is deceptive. Your heart is lustful. Your heart is stupid. Because it's not your brain. It's your heart. Your heart is, I mean, there's good things about your heart, but, but, but decision-making with your heart, not a good idea because you're, you make, make decisions off of feelings. And here's another secret. Your feelings change. It's not constant. It's not always. It's not eternal. God is. God is. God says your, your, your heart is not super trustworthy. Don't follow your heart. So for you, whether it's Magic 8 Balls, whether it's TV personalities, or the idiots outside, or the idiot inside, we all have made some dumb choices because we've consulted with less than the best source. And this is a huge problem, especially when we consider the fact that because of Christ, we have access to the source of all wisdom. All wisdom. Time and time again, we can, we can see the need to, to, to seek counsel. Where are we seeking that counsel? Now, a lot of us look at gifts in a, in a very different capacity. Now, when, when you have a, have a gift, we look at it and we make a decision based upon it. Now, maybe the reason that, that some of us today don't, don't take advantage of the gift that God's given us because we don't necessarily know how to use it or we don't have an appreciation for it. I've opened gifts in my life and I've had very little appreciation for them. You know, you know how that is, right? When, when, when you're around the, the, the family circle and you're opening the, the gifts up and one after one after one, you open them up and you're like, yay, this is a necessity of life, but it's not really exciting. You open up the box and socks. Oh, black socks. Gold toe. All right. All right. Open up the box. Look inside. 
Tidy Whites. Not my brand. Okay. You've opened up things, and, 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 and you've, you've seen what it is, and you know it's a necessity of life. You know, it's, it, it, you know the giver was, had a really good heart when they gave it to you, but, but there's something about your lack of appreciation that, that either makes you just go kind of hang it in the closet, leave it in the box, throw it away, or re-gift it, right? We, we just kind of give it away because we don't have an appreciation for, for what it is. We don't, we don't like it. It, it may be important, it may be necessity, but, but we don't like it. And this is, this is important. How we view the gift has everything to do with how we use the gift. You hear that? How we view it, how we see that gift has everything to do with how we will use that gift. If you don't see yourself need, needing wisdom, if you don't see yourself needing wise counsel, you won't seek it. You won't look for it. And I think that's where we so often, I know that's where I get so, so far off path sometimes because I don't think I need wise counsel. I think I'm good enough, smart enough, wise enough on my own or with the influences that I already have. So I don't always seek godly, wonderful counsel. And maybe that's your view today. Maybe Christmas presents is not really on your radar this morning because you were so self-reliant. Maybe you've gotten all the answers from Oprah that will, will last you a lifetime. Maybe, maybe you're in the boat that just says, you know, I really don't need what God has to say. I don't need that stuff because I've already got all the answers. Well, I would push back on you just a little bit and then ask this question. So how's that working for you? How's it working out being reliant upon yourself? How's it working out being your own counselor? Do you, do you see many people that go to court and, 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 and they are their own attorney? They are their own lawyer? Do you know why you don't see that very often? Because we are not nearly as smart or wise or frugal or amazing as we think we are. And we need the, the influence of outside counsel. We need the help, as a matter of fact, of outside counsel. And that's what God offers to us. That's the gift. That's the amazing promise of Isaiah 9. That Christ will come, this child that will be born unto us. And he will be a wonderful counselor. Not a sorry counselor. Not a stinky counselor. Not a counselor that gives you junk. But a counselor that's for you. That's with you. That's on your side. You see, there is a better way. There's a better way. God offers us the gift of guidance because he is on the scene to lead us. That's the promise that Isaiah meant. A child, a savior, a wonderful counselor. Some of you here this morning, and, and you've already kind of thrown your hands up. You've kind of given up on, 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 on the whole making good decisions, making wise decisions in your life. You just kind of, you know, this is kind of what it is. I make bad decisions. That's just what I do. Can, can, I, can I give you some encouragement today? That doesn't be, have to be how it is. Because God offers us this amazing gift, this amazing gift of counsel, this amazing gift that, that allows you to, to, to put out all the voices that are in your life and listen to his voice. God provides for us wonderful counsel that provides us peace and comfort. The Bible, in fact, tells us how we go about doing that. In James chapter 1, verse 5, it's a very simple verse in the latter part of the New Testament. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. So one, you acknowledge your need for wisdom and then ask. It's pretty simple. Acknowledge your need. Realize that I'm not as smart as I think that I am. I need godly wisdom in my life. And then ask for it. God, I need God, godly wisdom because the wisdom that I have ain't so great and it ain't so godly. God, I need you in my life. I want to claim the promise of the gift of the child of Jesus who is the wonderful counselor. Because about this time, I need some wonderful counsel. These decisions that, that I've been making, they're really not getting me anywhere. They're, they're really not allowing me to, to have peace and comfort in my life. They're really not getting me to a point where, where, where I feel like I'm, I'm better. I'm moving forward. I'm, not, I'm doing anything productive for, for my family, for my friends, for my coworkers, for my world, 
God, these decisions that I make on my own, they're, they're, they're not good enough. I've fooled myself this long to think that I've, I've, I've been doing it okay, but the reality is that I've not been doing it okay. I've just been existing, and it's a minimal existence at that. God, I need some wonderful counsel. Or maybe you've already hit that rock bottom place and you realize that your counsel, what you've had, the voices in your ears, the people around you, those biased people, you've already realized that they do not have your best interest at heart. God does. That's why he's the wonderful counselor. That's why he offers this gift to you of wonderful counsel. Wonderful counsel. The Christmas presence is Jesus. And Christmas presence gives us access to godly wisdom. Christmas presence gives us access to godly wisdom. And when we understand that truth, then we ask the next question, so how? How do I leverage that wisdom? How do I leverage what's available to me because God is with us? How, how do I leverage that? In other words, how do you use the present? How do you use the presence present? How do you, how do you, how do you tap in to what God has provided? It's three very simple ways. Three simple ways, and, and, and you, you could probably guess these ways. The first one is through prayer. The first one is through prayer. You access your present, which is God's presence, by praying. That's what we do. You can't depend on God without practicing prayer. We have to seek wonderful counsel by asking. Whether you get down on your knees, or whether you're driving in your car, or whether it's before you go to bed, or when you get up in the morning, or whether it's all day long in brief moments where you whisper prayers. You ask for God's presence to give you wonderful counsel. How many of you have, have thought about at times when you're, you're faced with a tough decision, well, I've, I've done everything else, so I might as well pray about it. I've asked everybody else, I might as well pray about it. Well, let me, let me encourage you to do this. When you have big decisions or when you have little decisions, pray about it. Ask God his thoughts, his opinions. I promise you, the more that, 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 that you do that, the more you will realize that you're not just banging your head against a wall, that God will bring people and scripture and things to mind that will give you guidance and purpose and direction. So first thing, tapping into the presence. How to use the gift of presence, of holy count, of, of wonderful counsel, is to pray about it. The second thing is God's word. After you've prayed about it, seek and, and research. Look in God's word. Read the Bible. Recognize that they're bad ideas, they're bad thoughts, and there are people throughout Scripture that have made bad decisions, bad thoughts. There is not a need for you to repeat those bad decisions because you know, because you can read about it. You can see, you can see how person after person in Scripture were dealt with by God and, and, and they had to deal with the circumstances and the, the consequences of their own decision. Through God's Word, we seek wonderful counsel by looking at God's Word. We look at the Bible as to how to live as we search for Christmas presents. The third thing is godly counsel. Godly counsel. Seek out sound, proven, godly counsel. Look for people in your life that are further down the road than you are. People that, that have walked through tough times and difficult decisions, but they've walked through it with grace because they have God's presence in their life. Look to the people around you, whether it's in your, in your home group or whether it's in the people you encounter in conversation. Look for people that are mature in their faith, people that have been disciples longer than yourself. Look for people that, that have, have lived some life and they have lived to tell the stories of their life. Church, that's why it's so important for us to, to have those, 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 those testimony moments. And I don't just mean about that moment where, where Christ came into your life. That's wonderful and that's good, but, but how God is working in your life now. It is significant what God is doing in your life, the story that he is working out right now in your life is important, not just for you, but for the people around you, for your children that are coming after you, for your family members and your co-workers that are experiencing difficulties and hard times. You get to be, in a very real way, part of God's story as you tell your story of what God is doing in your life. So three ways, three ways that we practice the presence. We use the present Present, present. Three ways. Prayer, God's word, and godly counsel of others. Three ways that we see how, how that, that presence, that, wa that wonderful counsel is played out in our lives. Now, I want you to understand something. Now, this is what I did not say. I did not say go directly to those people that you think are godly and wise without consulting God, without consulting God's word. 
as important and as amazing as those people are, nothing can take the place of being immersed in God's Word, taking time to, to pray and consider those things of God. Proverbs 30, 13 tells us this, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Proverbs 13, 20, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. So here's my question. Who's in your ear? Who's in your ear? Is it the wise or is it the foolish? The wise or the foolish? Who, who, who are those voices in your head? Who, who's influencing your life? Because here's the truth. Until we learn to walk with God, who has come to be with us and who is in fact for us, not only for salvation but also to give wonderful counsel, he is available. He is available and without him we will continue. We will continue to suffer harm. We'll make bad decisions in our personal lives, in our marriages, in our parenting, in our churches, in our governments. We'll make bad decisions in every area of our life until we submit and seek that wonderful counsel. Open that Christmas presence that God has for us, that he promised for us so long ago. I know from just spending time with, with most of you, from some of your stories, that, that you've tried it your own way. I've tried it my own way. Sometimes it might be kind of fun, but we pay for the consequences later on. We have advice from well-meaning friends. We have family. We have the peanut gallery. We have all these people that, 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 that genuinely seek to want to, to help. But can I, can I offer you this? only true help that we're going to find is in the wonderful wise counsel of God we've tried looking at the books we've tried watching the TV shows the celebrities and if we're honest we're still scratching our heads they seem to have more problems than we do yet we look to them for advice this Christmas this Christmas I invite you to take wonderful counsel I invite you to, to take, take it and test it, for, test it out. Take it out for a ride. Look to God for the answers that, that seem to elude you. Ask him to give you a focus that you, can't, you don't have otherwise. Wonderful counsel is available to us. And I invite you this Christmas to, to take the present that is Christ's presence this Christmas season. Open it up. Unpack that counsel. But here's the warning. Here's the warning. Wonderful counsel is not necessarily what you want to hear. Wonderful counsel is not necessarily what you want to do. Wonderful counsel will lead you to make decisions. And those decisions, they will benefit you. They'll benefit your family. They'll benefit your friends. They'll benefit your world. But in the moment, you may not see how good it is. Jesus is the child born into us, with us and for us. He is the wonderful counselor. He knows more than whether we're sleeping or if we're awake. He knows more than if you're naughty or not. Jesus knows more. And he's here. And he's waiting for you to ask. Will you pray with me this morning? Father God, you know our hearts. And you know more than anything else what we need is wonderful counsel. And we need that in the form of Jesus. Jesus is that wonderful counsel. And Father, this morning I just ask that you begin to work in hearts and minds to help people understand their need for that wonderful counsel. Father, the first thing on each and every one of our Christmas lists this, this Christmas season, it must be Jesus. It must be the wonderful counsel that he provides. And God, let us step into that. Let us, let us tap into that wisdom. It's not just advice. It's not just simply direction, but God, it's all of that. For those of us who know Christ as Savior, God, we know that he really is the wonderful counsel. But God, so often we, we choose other counsel instead. God, let us live our lives with the gift of this wisdom. God, to trust and rely upon him in all circumstances. For others of us this morning, God, we're still lost in our own counsel. We're lost in our, our own 
self-indulgent decision or we're lost in self-indecision. God, sometimes we're, we're too easily influenced by the, the words of others. But God, help us this morning to come to saving knowledge. Saving knowledge today. God, help us to believe in Jesus and his wonderful counsel. God, let us know that your presence is here and it is for us. God, give us the courage to open the gift of Christ this Christmas and to be saved from our sin and live in the wonderful counsel of God. It's in Jesus' name I pray.